Luke 19, verse 28. You ready? When he had said this, he went on ahead, going up to Jerusalem. And it came to pass, when he drew near Bethpage and Bethany, at the mountain called Olivet, that he sent two of his disciples, saying, Go into the village opposite you, and where you enter you'll find a colt tied, on which no one has ever sat. Loose it and bring it here, verse 31. And if anyone asks you, why are you loosing it? Thus you shall say to him, because the Lord has need of it. Everybody say that. Because the Lord has need of it. So those who were sent went their way and found it just as Jesus had said to them. But when they were loosing the colt, the owners of it said to them, why are you loosing it? And they said, the Lord has need of him. And they brought him to Jesus and they threw their own clothes on the colt. And they sat Jesus on him. And as he went, many spread their clothes on the road. And then he was now drawing near the descent of the Mount of Olives. The whole multitude of the disciples began rejoicing and praising God with a loud voice. What kind of voice? A loud voice for all the mighty works they had seen, saying, let's all read this together. Blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. And some of the Pharisees called to him from the crowd and said, Teacher, rebuke your disciples. And he answered them and said to them, I tell you that if these should keep silent, the stones would immediately cry out. Now as he drew near, he saw the city and wept over it, saying, If you had known even you, especially in this your day, the things that make your... That make your peace, but now they've been hidden from your eyes. For the days will come upon you when your enemies will build an embankment around you and close in on every side. And our final verse, verse 44, and level you and your children within you to the ground and now not leave in you one stone upon one another because you did not know the time of your visitation. Let's pray. Father, we thank and praise you for the joy that it's been to worship and be together this morning. Thank you for what you did in the first service. Now, in this second service this morning, I pray that you'd move in great power. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. There's moments that come in our lives, and they'll never come again. And as much as we would like to say, well, he gives you a second chance, that's true. I do believe God does give second chances, but he doesn't necessarily give the same opportunity again. And there are moments like that. Some have called them kairos moments, where time and destiny meet. And they're, they're really positioned for us in our lives. And if you think about the time that you met your wife or your husband, to you think about the time that you got saved, that was a, a moment in your life that, that came and it's a one-time thing. This text is profound in many ways. And the first one I want to bring mention to is in Zechariah chapter 9, the prophet in verse 9 says this, Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout, daughter of Jerusalem. See, your king comes to you, righteous, having salvation, gentle, riding on a donkey, the colt of a, don a foal of a donkey, What's amazing about this scripture, hundreds of years before, the prophet is talking about the Messiah. He's talking about the Savior. He's talking about the Christ, he used the Greek term Christ, and how he would come. And it's exactly what is fulfilled in these Gospels as it talks about his triumphal entry. But to go a little a level deeper here in the text, Jesus spoke about this as he wept over Jerusalem he said, if you had only known the day of your visitation, then on this day. He's talking about a specific day. And if you look at the book of Daniel chapter 9, and we'll go ahead and put it up. Chapter 9, book of Daniel, verse 25. And following, it says this. No one understand this from the time of the word that the word goes out to restore and rebuild Jerusalem until the anointed one, the ruler, comes, there will be, let's stop, leave it up, please. The prophet Daniel, visited by an angelic messenger, gets the time frame of when the Messiah comes. 
Listen, I'm going to tell you, you got to have more faith in the Word of God. It's not the Word of God. Then the Word of God actually is the Word of God. And anybody that tells you that it contradicts itself or it's irrelevant or it's just written by man is nothing but an ignoramus. Actually, usually insulating themselves from the truth that actually there is a God, there is a Savior, there are the Ten Commandments, and they're going to have to live right because they're going to give account for their life. And so you, people want to insulate themselves so that they can just murder babies, look at pornography, and do whatever they want to, and not be an account. But that's not the truth. Come on, you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. And the book of Daniel here, angel talking to Daniel, he records, he says, and know this, from the time the word goes out to restore and rebuild Jerusalem, until the anointed one, the ruler, comes. So when does the word go out to restore and rebuild Jerusalem? Well, that's in the book of Nehemiah. And in actual fact, archaeologically, historically, we know when that was. We have, we have the information. It's in Scripture, and it's backed by archaeology. Nehemiah chapter 2, the decree to rebuild goes forth. So that starts the go. How many of you ever had a, stop, a stopwatch? You ever run a race? So there are, on your marks, get set. And they click, and they're looking, and they're running. Ooh, he's got a pretty fast quarter. Right? This starts the time clock. So as soon as a decree is given for them to return to Jerusalem, rebuild, the clock starts. And then he gives a, he gives us the time frame. Now, it's, to us, it's a little bit of a mystery, so you have to study really what it means. But basically, it's 434 years. So if you do the math and what he's, declare, what he's writing here, all these sevens and so on and so forth, 434 years. So all you have to do is figure out when the decree is given to rebuild Jerusalem, count 434 years, and guess what you get? You get the day the ruler, the anointed one, the Messiah, comes into Jerusalem. So when Jesus is saying, is anybody getting their faith built right now? When Jesus is saying, if you had only known the day. He's not talking about a general season. He's talking about a specific day, 434 years actually after. And there are many scholars who have written on that. And if you're interested in that, you can certainly look into it and study it. And it'll build your faith. Come on, God inspired men as they wrote the Word of God moved along by the Holy Spirit. Prophets of old. By the way, they long to live in the day you're in. The day that we're living in. So God has these time clocks, these moments. And a few weeks back, Pastor Kirsten Davis talked about these God moments that come. These Kairos moments that come. And this is a text when a Kairos moment came to Israel to God's chosen people, but many were not aware of it. And he then pronounces judgment on them. I want you to be ready for what God wants to do in your life. I feel impressed by the Holy Spirit to, to make you ready. See, Palm Sunday is a perfect Sunday to preach a message like this because this is Palm Sunday as he rides in and these palms in the book of John, which is the historic text that's used, as they wave these palms. How many ever went and got a palm when you came to church? We did that last year, but they wanted to rip us off of shipping, shipping so we decided not to do that. So we just, we'll just use our hands as palms. Come on, God. Come on, how many got a palm? Let me see it. Hey, Palm Sunday was up. I want you to be ready. I want you to be in the right place at the right time so that God can help you, use you, move you forward in destiny and purpose. So how do you do that? Well, very simply, you, you've got to recognize that you're important to God. Recognize, come on, someone say recognize you're important to God. Make it simple, say I'm important. Yeah, God thinks I'm important. Say that. God thinks I'm important. Verse 29, sends these two disciples, fulfilling Zechariah 9.9. 9. And they come and they, they, they find this beast of burden. It's never been ridden on by anybody. He gets a word of knowledge. That's what he has. Jesus has a, a word of knowledge. Oh, oh yeah, this is the Zechariah moment. Go find the, go find the beast of burden. They go. They find it. They untie it. Just as he said, the owner comes out and says, hey, what are you doing? You're ripping off my, ripping off my car. 
So no, no, the Lord has anything. He's like, oh, no problem. You know, we don't hear any conflict there. And, and they walk away. What's amazing to me is when Jesus gets on that. Has anybody ever ridden a horse? It's amazing to me that the, the donkey doesn't buck off. You know why? Because he's the prince of peace. And the fulfillment of Zechariah 9 takes place. And it's also a picture that even though you might be a donkey, that Jesus can bring you peace. Come on, he can bring order to your life. And I've talked about that before. I know he has for me. Anybody else know what I'm talking about? He brings order. And, and it's interesting to me that the Lord had need of the donkey. Come on, if he had need of a donkey, he's got need of you. I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to give you a, a hope and a future. He's got a plan for you. Come on, God, God's good. Say God's good. God's good. He's got a plan. He said, well, you don't know what I've done. Well, maybe you don't recognize the redeeming power of the blood of Jesus. The Lord has need. And, and as they ride out, they, they laying down their clothes, which is a picture of royalty, and, and they're, they're shouting and clapping. Shouting and clapping. They don't have their hands folded in some, some religious, dead, pharisaical style with their heads bound in reverence as the king rides in. They are shouting and clapping. I'm going to tell you, if, if worship was too loud for you this morning, we're sorry, but you're going to hate heaven. Just saying. If it was too loud, too exuberant, too much joy. We actually had somebody say to me, and God bless them. They said, I, I can't come to your church. I said, oh, oh that's, that's okay. They said, well, yeah, I have to go find another church. I said, well, there's a lot of great churches. And I said, well, tell me, what are you looking for? And, you know, let me see if I can help you, direct you. And they said, well, your church is just too happy. <laughs> I mean, I didn't know what to say at that point. I, Forgive us for the fact that we don't have more depression. <laughs> I didn't say that. I just sort of, I thought, oh. I don't really know any depressed churches. And listen, if you find one, don't go. Well, Jesus went to the synagogue. I, I guess it's better to go somewhere than nowhere. They crucified him. But what's fascinating to me is these, these Pharisees yell, tell your, tell your disciples to be quiet. It's just like a religious spirit. A religious spirit will want you to behave yourself. Just don't, go, don't get too happy. Don't get too crazy. Whatever you do, don't dance for goodness sake. And don't lift your hands. But blind Bartimaeus cried out all the more, Jesus, son of David, have mercy. I'm going to tell you something. Exuberant joy in worship makes noise. And, and there is 24 hours a day, seven days a week around the throne. They're casting down crowns. They're lifting their voices, worshiping the king of kings. And the Pharisees are really a picture of, of Satan trying to, trying to stop praise going unto God. And then this text goes to Jesus weeping, verse 43. He wept over their city because he didn't know, they didn't know their time of visitation. You know, when you're blind, it's hard to see things. When you're deceived, that's the difficulty about deception, is you don't know that you're deceived, hence the word deception. I mean, I'm sure if they could have seen, they would have been responding differently, but something had them blind. The God of this age, 2 Corinthians 4, 4, says he got, it blinds the mind of unbelievers, lest they see the truth of the gospel. Listen, you might be here today or online today, and you don't really believe that Jesus is the Lord and Savior, that he's the King of kings, that he's the Lord of lords. You might not believe that. Maybe you got dragged here today. And you're like, I just can't wait till that bald-headed guy is quiet so I go eat lunch. Maybe you're online. And the only reason you would think that way is because you're blind. There's a veil that comes over your eyes. The God of this age is not, it's not God small g. It's, it's God small g. God, as in false God, Satan is the one who blinds. You know why your family's not saved yet? They're blind. You know why people haven't come to Christ yet? They're blind. Do you know why people don't worship with all their heart, mind, soul, and strength? Because maybe they have a measure of blindness. 
If you'd really come to understand what Jesus set you free from, you wouldn't be able to stay in your seat. You know, we had an interesting thing happen. I, we were coming back from the governor's prayer breakfast yesterday. I had just about all of our staff in a van. Majority of the staff, all our staff pastors in a van, our wives. We're coming back, 10 people in a van. It's snowing like crazy. We prayed before we left. And we're rejoicing and having fun in the van. And we came up. On, on the biggest pile of cars and wrecks I personally have ever seen in my nearly 50 years. I've just never seen that many cars in the road, and they just appeared out of nowhere. I mean, from me to the, to the back of the sanctuary, boom, automobiles everywhere. Car parts, people standing by their cars, snow coming down, cars everywhere. And... I hit my brakes. Thank God I wasn't going faster. The people that passed me at 70 plus, they're, they're, they're wasted. So they're, they're, they're like wasted on the side of the road. In fact, I think one of them actually caused the thing. Hit a light pole. And the light pole came across the highway about a mile from, uh, from the parks and the Glen. That turnoff coming, coming into the valley from Anchorage side. And... It was so funny. We're yelling at this one girl who looks exactly like somebody that we know from the church, you know. We're yelling at her, Emily, get away from the, Emily, are you all right? Emily, it's like, it goes like, yes, what? That's not my name. And we're like, oh. <laughs> it's hysterical. Sort of. Thank God she was all right. Do you know, as I, the next thing I'm looking at for all of you that are aware in your driving skills, I'm staring at my rearview mirror because the next thing that can come up on me is an 18-wheeler going 65 miles an hour. Fervent prayer erupts in the van, which is good. It's a sign that we're all sanctified. There wasn't F-bombs and stuff like that. That's good. Your staff wasn't cursing. They were praying. Praise the Lord. I knew they were sanctified. Thank you, Jesus. And this prayer meeting erupts and I, I'm looking in my rearview mirror, and sure enough, I see somebody just barreling down on us, and there's no way, for, no way to stop. So I step on the gas, and I've, I've already got my plan to weave through a little bit of traffic so we just don't get absolutely creamed. And by God's grace, he just veered off, missed us as I'm moving forward, comes off the backside, hits the median and a whole pile of snow at 60 plus miles an hour. I'm just telling you, God protected us. Amen. Come on, somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. You know, when you realize what God has done for you this morning, I could not stop crying as Pastor Alex is leading worship because I came into the, this corporate anointing and I'm like, man, he saved me again. He saved me again. We would have a very different Sunday morning this morning. Very different. All of our lives are fragile. You don't know what's coming your way. Oh, but if you'll trust the living God, he's worthy of worship. Come on, lift your voice on Palm Sunday and thank him. You could be dead today. You could be in a wheelchair today. You could be, come on, you could be addicted today. Come on, you could be broken. You could have a bad report today. Oh no, God's on the throne. He saved you. He healed you. He set you free. Come on, somebody say hallelujah. Come on, shout hallelujah. That's why they're shouting. That's why they're clapping, because they'd seen Simon the leper is no longer a leper. They'd seen the guys who were blind now have eyes. Amazing. And the Pharisees tell him to shut up. And in fact, I will rebuke you now. I don't know who you are, but if in your heart they'd be like, man, shut up. That's because you have a religious spirit and you need it broken off of you. If you're like, this is, I'm just super uncomfortable. It's just because you're uncomfortable. It has nothing to do with the freedom. The freedom is the thing that's right. The uncomfortable thing is what's going on, on the inside of you. Lock the doors, ushers, please. I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Well, Jesus weeps because they missed their time. They what? They missed their time. That's amazing. They missed their time. You mean they had this time? Yeah, they had the time to notice the Messiah. And by not noticing and by not receiving, by not rejoicing, and by being blinded and really 
addicted to their own religion, if you will, their own set of rules. Jesus is outside their rule box. They didn't see him as Isaiah 53, the suffering servant. What's amazing is that he dec- declares judgment on the city. And everybody said, well, what, did that happen? Oh, yes, in fact, it did. Forty years later, the Roman emperor, uh, pardon me, the Roman general Titus marches on Jerusalem and sacks the city and wipes it out. Against his regulations, the, the, the Roman army burns the temple. Titus didn't want them to do it. He said, don't do it, but they did it anyway. And they burned the temple to the ground. Now, here's, here's the amazing thing. The very prophetic word of judgment over them that not one stone would be upon another. Do you know that that came about too? You said, was it an earthquake? No, no, it wasn't an earthquake. When they burned the temple, all the gold, this is history, people. This is 40 years after Jesus made this declaration. When they burned the temple, all the gold and articles and utensils of the temple melted and went into all the cracks of all the stones. And what happened is the Roman soldiers, after the fire, overturned the stones to get the gold, and not one stone of the temple was left on top of another. Come on, somebody ought to say, wow. So he's weeping because they missed their time. And I think that Jesus has wept over my life before because I think I've missed moments. Oh, for the love of God, I don't want to miss another one. I don't want to miss not one more. I don't want to miss one more moment that he has for me. And so on this Palm Sunday, as I bring this message to a conclusion, I want you to ask yourself, one, are you aware that there's moments like that for you right now? Number two, their eyes were spiritually blinded to their significance and the time that they were in. Are, your, are you blinded? Listen, we live in a time in history that's never been before, not like this. I mean, you can see it in the elections and all, all that's going on there. Wars, rumors of wars. I mean, I'm still a young man. I used to think that nearly 50, 50 I thought was old, but now that I know it's actually the new 30. Hey, praise. God felt the Holy Ghost for a second. But I mean, for some of you that are, that are even older than that, I mean, the amount of wars, rumors of wars, earthquakes, tsunamis, it's just, it's unprecedented. It is an unprecedented groan all over the earth. Come on, we're nearer, we're closer than when we first believed. And I don't want to be blind like, like the religious people of Jesus' day. I want to have my eyes open. I want, I want him to show me so that I know so that I can be ready, so that I can be positioned. I don't want him to weep over me ever again. Stay open to receive from the Lord. Come on, stay open to receive from him. Ask him, show me, show me, show me, open my eyes. I want to see. You know, the result of missing moments, I think number one, if you're not, if you don't have that, then you can actually miss God's best for you. Number one, number two, you can you can miss the peace of God. Number three, I think you can miss heaven. Not everybody's going to heaven. Didn't God make everybody? Yes, God made everybody, but not everybody is God's child because sin separates us from Him. On this Palm Sunday, you make sure the devil doesn't rob you of praise. You pray that God would open your eyes and you not miss not one. Has anybody missed moments besides me? I've missed many. I don't want to miss anymore. So I want to be positioned. I want to be ready. Come on, you ever see see somebody at bat? Pastor Alex was a great baseball player. Some of you don't know that. He was good batter, right? When you're at bat, buddy, there's a stance. You got to get your bat speed. I mean, you're, you never see a batter like, go ahead. No, no, batter, batters, man, they, they, right? I mean, they set their cleats and they're, they're in, they're in there. They, they grab, they, they cock that thing back. 
Pretty good, right? <laughs> Elbow up. They caught that thing. They, they get ready to shift their weight and, and, and transition all that, snap their wrists, and hit a home run. Don't you want to hit a home run? So do you think you're going to hit a home run by resting on your laurels and kicking back? Come on, you want to be ready, don't you? Come on, stand up on your feet. Lord, we don't want to miss anything that you have for us. And we are, we are very aware that you are moving in our valley, moving in our church in a way that's unprecedented. And we give you glory and honor. We thank you for the privilege we have to be your sons and daughters because of the blood. Blessing and judgment are in the, in the hands of God. And they're in the gospel. Listen, this is not popular, but it's true. And when Jesus sent them out two by two, he says, go into the cities. He sends them before his face. And he says, when you come to a house, say to that house, peace. If a man of peace is there, his peace will return. Heal the sick and set the captives free. I'm paraphrasing. But if there's not a man of peace there, Leave that place. Shake off your sandals, the dust off of your feet, for it would be worse in that day than it was for Sodom and Gomorrah. Listen, God offers you blessing. He offers you favor. He offers you healing. He offers you His kingdom. He offers you peace today. But if you deny it, then you could actually go around the mountain again and, and, and get beatings. And that's not God's plan for you. You reject Him, then listen, it is black and white. It is. Get right with God all across this place. Those online, come on, give your heart to Jesus if you've not done that before. Do it right now. If you have, but you drifted, you know you're not as on fire as you used to be, recommit your life to the Lord all across this place. If that's you, pray this right out loud. Say, Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for sending your son Jesus to die in my place. And I believe that he rose again from the grave for me. Forgive me of all of my sin. And come into my heart. Come into my life. Be my Lord and Savior. Wash me and cleanse me. And make me new. Thank you for loving me. Thank you for hearing my prayer. Amen. Let me pray for you. Holy Spirit, I pray. Fill. Touch. I command spiritual blindness to be lifted from people's eyes, even deception to go. Lord, even those that are embattled with, with religion, they're bound up, needing freedom. God, I pray you'd release freedom right now. The freedom of your spirit. Set the captives free. Break every chain and every bondage, every curse. God, we thank you and praise you. You make us sensitive, Lord to not miss these moments that come. We'd be in the right place at the right time. We'd be a people of prayer. Be faithful to the house of the Lord. Faithful to grow in you. Not just on Sunday. Every day. And when it's all done and you split the eastern sky. When you split the eastern sky we would be there lifting our eyes. God, and I know our redemption draws nigh. God, I thank you for what you're doing in our lives and what you're doing in our nation. Even so, come Lord Jesus. Even so, Maranatha. Maranatha.